Okay, we are streaming. Oh, we're not streaming. We go, the audio's going out. Ta-da! All right, there we go. So howdy, folks. I am going to be talking about what happens when you roll back delete. I happen to see this question over at Stack Overflow, and I'm going to copy-paste this out over into the chat window. This is, I'll say, this is the post we're talking about. Um, so I saw this post come out, and I, you know, it's kind of sad. You, you see somebody who's struggling with a delete. Delete statement not responding to kill session command. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens. This poor person, David Woke, says, four days ago, a user, four days ago, four, four days ago, four days ago, a user ran the command below on a table with 400 million rows. It's still running, and the log file is increasing in size. And the log file is continuing to grow, and when I kill the session, it returns this message, transaction rollback in process, estimated rollback completion 0%, time remaining 0 seconds. Well, I kind of wanted to, to record a video showing what happens when this happens, because the better earlier off you are in your career when you see this happening, the better off you'll be to understand that you shouldn't jump in and start killing things until you really understand how much work is involved with it and how long the rollback is going to take. And it can be really hard to figure out. In order to illustrate it, I'm going to be using the Stack Overflow database, the big monster full-size one that's about 350 gigs in size. And I'm working with a decently powered server. I'm on an 8-core VM, 60 gigs worth of RAM. I'm going to replicate what that user was doing, but I'm going to pretend that I have this delete statement, and I'm going to pretend that I forgot to highlight the where clause. You know, if you haven't done that yet in your career, it's a matter of time until you do. So I'm going to show the effects of it, but first I'm going to go show you how large the table is. I'm going to go run this SP Blitz Index command, and one of the things that I like about SP Blitz Index is it'll go and show you how large the object is. So here in this case, I'm going to move this around just a little bit to make it easier for the screenshot. Table's got about 100 million rows in it. The table itself, the clustered index of the table, is about 170 gigs in size. And then I've also got a handful of other indexes on fairly narrow columns. So as I, as I explain this to you, what I'm also going to be doing is taking screenshots in order to bolster the blog post. So I'm going to highlight things around here, take a quick screenshot of this just so that I can use it for the blog post later. Now we're going to go and delete the table. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say begin train and delete from post history. I am going to turn on the actual execution plan. This is going to help me tell the story a little bit when I'm going and trying to kill the query. So I'm going to turn on actual execution plan, highlight the begin tran and the delete, and be like, oh, dang it, I totally forgot to highlight the where clause. But of course, in real life, the user often doesn't notice that until several minutes or hours into running the query. They never hit cancel right away. It always takes them a little bit of time in order to figure out what's going on. Well, you, as the like person who has to deal with the recovery efforts and the performance tuning, they might ask you, hey, Brent, what's going on on the server? And you're probably going to run either SP Blitz Who or Who is Active. Both of these effectively have the same purpose. What they do is they go and run and get the execution plans. Actually, let me go and say go. Both of these go and get the execution plans and queries that are running right now live on the server. See, both of them show how long the query's been running, about 43 seconds. And both of them will show you the query plan, but they will also show you the live query plan. Newer versions of SQL Server, you get this capability. In older versions, like 2016, you had to go back and turn on a switch. And I'll talk more about that inside the blog post. If I click on Live Query Plan, you don't get an animated execution plan. It doesn't show you things moving from left to right. But what you get is the percentage complete of each of these operators. I'm going to zoom in a couple of times and move around. You can see that the clustered index scan on the post history table has really only kind of gotten started. It's only about 2% into the game. And then it's only about 2% into the clustered index delete. 
After that clustered index delete finishes, we're going to have to sort this table multiple ways and then delete each of the indexes as well. So it's going to be a long time before this thing goes off and finishes. So right now it's at about 2%. If I go back over and I run SP Blitz who again, or who is active, either one, go look at the query plan. Now you can see I'm up to about, say, 5%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these query plans in order to tell the story of the blog post of what's going on. So let's go get it again and run SP Blitz Who. I'll get the screenshot. I'm going to move things around just a little bit in order to get the screenshot a little bit better. There we go. And highlight that out. And he 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 query cost of 200,000 good times. Uh, so if I click on the live query plan, I'll get a screenshot of what that looks like. And then I'll wait a second and then get another screenshot after I do another live query plan to show that it's moved forward a little bit further. 7%. I think the last one was I think the last one was 6%. Let me go through and wait and wait a little bit longer for it to maybe get to like 8%. And God bless the souls who don't have live query plans turned on. Of course, there's no way that they're going to know how far apart this or far along this thing is. Okay, great. So I got the 8% thing going there. All right, so this thing's been going for a little while. And what if the user says, oh my God, something's, oh my God, it's been going for three minutes and 21 seconds. You can look down at the bottom of my SSMS and it shows you it's been going for three minutes and 20 some seconds. Oh my God, we got to kill it. It's been running way too long. So you got to get the session ID that you're going to go and kill. In this case, I know that I'm going to kill session ID number 68. So let's go kill it. I'm going to kill 68. I kill 68, and when I do it, it says kill command completed successfully. Let's get a screenshot of that just for the blog post. Do, do, do. And then, then when you go back and run SP Blitz who or SP who is active, they both still show it running. And when we used to show the live query plan, it ain't here anymore. Now, during a rollback, rawr, you don't get live query plans for rollbacks, unfortunately. So this is one of those things that I want to screenshot and show for the blog post, because it's the kind of thing that you're going to really wish you had uh, whenever you were trying to deal with a rollback. So when you don't have that, the thing that we've conventionally had to do in the past is we've used this kill with status only command which tells you roughly how far along the rollback is. So here it says estimated percent completion 0%, time remaining 0 seconds. Well, that seems like we should be pretty, you know, almost done in the sense of 0 seconds remaining. But if I run that a few times, it still shows the same exact thing. The progress bar ain't moving forward, and the time remaining is still saying it's staying at 0 seconds. Meanwhile, if I go in and look at my transaction log, let's go in and look in the Z drive here where I keep this database's data and log files. So in here, right now, my log file's been growing this whole time. We're up at like 60 gigs worth of log file space because it took a lot of log space in order to do this delete transaction, and it ain't going away. This may really start to freak me out as a, as a manager or database administrator. I can keep going in here and looking at this kill status of 50 or 68 with status only, and everything still shows 0%. This is one of your freakiest moments as a database administrator, not knowing when the rollback is going to finish. And if you look at things like BlitzWho and Who is Active, they will show, coming up and moving things around a little bit here, they will show that the amount of CPU continues to move up, the amount of reads and writes will continue to move up, but they just have no way of telling you how far along this thing is. There's a percent complete in who is active. It's also in Blitz Who if you turn on expert mode. And yet they just won't show anything because SQL Server doesn't provide us that. We don't have a really good way of knowing whenever this thing is going to finish.
So let's say that I've been waiting on this for like an hour and my managers are like, screw it, you got to go live now, figure it out. Well, you can restart the SQL Server, but that doesn't really fix anything. If I go restart this SQL Server instance, this is, are you sure you want to do it? Yes, please go through and go for it. All SQL Server is going to do is go pick up right back in the transaction log wherever it left off. So let's see, hopefully this thing comes back up here. That's why I love doing demos in the lab and not in real life. Uh, so now let's go back and look at our database list. Stack Overflow is here. Okay, that's good. Now, did this thing finish? Oh, looks like it might have finished. There are other queries that are up and running. Now, of course, my query failed. Cannot continue the session because my session's in the kill state. Can I go look at the post history table? And is that table up and running? Columns. Looks like it is. Looks like I got lucky and the rollback finished. But what you often run into in real life is after you restart this thing, the rollback is still right up and going the whole entire time. The, the really only fix for that at that point, you either have to wait for the rollback to finish or else you have to go and restore the database. And I've seen people run into problems trying to restore a database that's got transactions open in the middle of doing things like a rollback. So that's a whole separate piece that I'll post you links towards in the blog post. So that's a rough idea of what I wanted to share there. And now I'll go off and go write the blog post with the screenshots that I just gathered. Hope you all had fun uh, watching that. And I will see you all around the site. Adios. I still feel so bad for that poor person who's, who's still over there. If you go and look at the Stack Overflow post, is still over there. You know, there's I'm at a loss of what to do about this query to get it rolling back and just understanding what's going on. And I love how, God bless Stack Overflow, to avoid this scenario next time, tell the users how to do deletes in batches. That was never the problem. The problem is that people always don't understand how big this is going to be and they don't highlight it. And okay, you know what? There's something else that I should teach you now that we're talking through this. And I actually have a separate blog post about this, demoing this. But the, the other thing that somebody from Microsoft is eventually going to read the blog and they're going to pop up and go, you didn't tell them about accelerated database recovery. Okay, yeah, I, I should tell you that as well. So, oh my God, oh, I did a, wow, I did a refresh on the page and it says, uh, although Sim 4 days seems long, we have no idea the original delete would have taken from Brent Ozar. Huh. What do you mean, what? What, why are you copy, how are you copying something from me and you didn't even link where it was? Where'd you get that from? I don't even remember where I said that. All right, anyway, so let's go back over here and I'll show you another way that you can make rollbacks happen way faster. And I'm actually a pretty big fan of this. Uh, so let's, um, I'm gonna save that demo window and I'm gonna close it. Um, now I'm gonna go back over, so I've got my post history table. Let's go look at the size again, just oops, so that we know that it's still really big and large. And I also have to be in the correct database when I run this stored procedure. Okay, so after the rollback finishes, I'm right back to having, I love you doing green screen work. Um, I'm right back to having uh, about 100 million rows in the table and the table takes up ballpark 200 gigs worth of space uh, altogether. Um, so let me go, there's one other thing I want to pop up up on there. Why is that not showing up? Let me put your YouTube chats over on another window just in case anybody asks a question. Okay, so there's this, there's this other thing that'll make rollbacks happen way faster and it's called accelerated database recovery. If I go into properties on the database, and this was new in SQL Server 2019, I'll link to that inside the post, and I'm not even gonna write about it inside the post, it's just gonna be something I'm talking about here now live. Um, but let's see where this thing is, because I never remember exactly where it is. Accelerated, you know what, I may have to Google for how to turn it on. Maybe we don't set it here. I know there's an alter database uh, setting. Oh man, it's not in the GUI. Oh, that's funny. So I got to type in, oh, I got to type in like some kind of Cretan. Uh, accelerated database recovery site, brandozar.com, because I happen to have a demo script on there. And so here's the demo script and the fancy pants. What da, 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 da. There it is. Alter database, 
copy that out. So it's just a one line alter database. Boom. And it's going to be, I'm going to use current because I like doing that. So what this does is it basically puts the persistent version store inside your own database. SQL Server in the past has done this version store thing, but it's been kept in TempDB that would keep old versions of your rows. Starting SQL Server 2019, if you want, you can put the, the uh, version store inside the database itself. What this gives you is the ability to do blazing fast near instant rollbacks no matter how large the transaction was. Probably being blocked by something here. Let's go solve our blocking problem by looking to see what queries are running. And both of these queries are waiting for a lock. Who's... Is it 63? Let's go kill this other guy. Kill 63. He's gone. Did this other guy finish? Yep, okay, cool. So now you can see that it's on. If I go into select star from sys databases, there is a database level flag. Do, 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 do. Is accelerated database recovery on? So because this is set to one inside my Stack Overflow database, now SQL Server is tracking the version store changes inside my database. Now if I go back and I do that exact same ugly begin tran again, and I'm going to do the begin tran without highlighting my where clause, D D D D D. oh my god, the whole entire server is being, or you know, the whole entire table is being deleted. Now, if I watch, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this thing roll for a minute or two before I go and do the kill. We'll go in and look to make sure that our live execution plan is showing some nice good progress here. So we're about 1% done with the delete. I'll let it run for another minute or two uh, before I go and kill it. Now, what this is doing, this has a few drawbacks, because what it'll also do is store uh, changes to rows inside your user database, which means that your user database can grow larger than it did before if you have very long-running transactions, like long-running updates that are changing a whole lot of data and a whole lot of rows. Now you're keeping both the old and new rows inside the same user database, whereas before uh, that stuff would be kept in the uh, transaction log. Now when I do this, the, the transaction log is able to be cleared out as soon as the transaction log backup is taken. We don't have to wait for the whole entire long-running transaction to finish before we mark the portions of the transaction log as available for reuse, which is kind of cool. Okay, so this thing has been going. He's up to about 4%. So now let's try killing him. So he is SPID number 58. Let's go kill 58, execute. Do you see how fast that happened? Immediately the other one shows as not connected. And if I go run to look to see what processes are running right now, there aren't any. And if I go to look at that table again, let's go look back at SP Blitz index to see how much stuff is inside that row or inside those tables. It's all still here. Ta-da! So that's a cool part about accelerated database recovery. Um, like anything else with SQL Server, it's a brand new feature in 2019, so that means you're rolling the dice on bugs. Uh, there were some interesting bugs with it that kind of have a sketchy, uh, sketchy thing going on with them. If I go to SQLServerUpdates.com and I search for corruption, accelerated database recovery, um, so there was a bug when Microsoft first shipped Cumulative Update 2. There's this bug in here, Accelerated Database Recovery Silently Corrupts Data. Now this bug was listed in the knowledge base articles for Cumulative Update 2, but then they mysteriously yanked it after CU2 went live. This now no longer points to a valid page, points to a 404 over on Microsoft which basically means one of two things. Either they didn't really fix the bug, or they fixed the bug and they're not particularly proud that that bug was happening. So one of those two things. Uh, so if you do choose to play around with this, this is also because it's such a version one kind of feature. It's something so totally new and different than the SQL Server was doing before. It would be something that I would want to test the bejesus out of before I went live. There you go. Okay. So there we go. John, uh, Joel Moore says, Brent, how are you? I am wonderful. Other than the fact that I'm 
wearing this red shirt today because they said they were going to send me down to the planet. And I don't know exactly what that means, but I suppose I'll find out about that later. Uh, all right. So hopefully y'all learned something and I'll post that blog post probably in the next two weeks or so. Adios.